Hey guys, well today I'm finally going to be able to do a video request that my friend from Sweden, Magnus, asked for. And basically the gist of his request was to make a deadfall trap out of smaller type logs. Um, let's say you didn't have the perfect flat rock or you didn't have a big rock and you didn't have large logs available in your area. Um, I'm going to guess that uh, Magnus, I'm sure, I think you told me you have birch and pine. Uh, the biggest one, well, I'm going to use a piece of poplar that's kind of big, but I'm, the biggest birch I'm going to use is, you know, about that big around. So hopefully you have some logs about that size in your area. I've been doing a bit of tr uh, research in this uh, primitive trapping stuff, and I came across this deadfall, and I, I really like it. It's just, it's not too complicated. If you look at the picture, or if you just kind of look at it, it seems complicated, but it works off the same principle as a lot of our spring pole snares do. Um, it basically works off of a toggle and applying pressure on that toggle and restraining it with a trip stick. So um, I did this video last night. I wasn't happy with the way it turned out. Last night was my, la my son's last night home on leave from the Air Force. So my head wasn't 100% in it, and I kind of rushed a couple things. I didn't like how it turned out. Um, even with filming and stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, the video, the uh, project only took about 45 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, from beginning to end. Now that's pretty good with filming and with building a natural trap like this. And one thing with these deadfalls is you can use them generally year after year if you keep the components, you know maybe after you're done for the for the season or whatever and maybe put the components up against a tree or maybe in, in a branch of a tree or, or even just installed, you know. Um, they'll weather and stuff, but they'll also stay there for a number of years. So um, once you make one, they're really easy to set too. So, all right, let me uh, grab the components and I'll kind of explain uh, the process uh, going about this. Okay, the first part of this trap is grabbing a couple of fork sticks and the size of these fork sticks are really going to be determined but by what type of game animal you're going to be trying to catch with this particular trap with the amount of weight and stuff i have i'm figuring let me get that in there a little bit better I'm figuring I could for sure trap a rabbit in this. I'm thinking this would be a good trap for um, uh, weasels. Um, it's kind of billed as an otter trap, but it's basically any animal that uses the same path over and over again, you can set this trap up with. Um, or you could lure it in too. But it doesn't use any bait, um, or you can set it up without using bait, which is kind of a, a good thing. Um, all right, so let me try and explain what I mean by using the same toggle system as our traps. So you get two forked sticks, you pound them into the ground, okay? I think this is my, my stick. And I'll go over some of these, you'll, you'll notice there's some notches and stuff on here. I'll go over that when I get it all set up, just some tips and tricks that will help your your deadfall spring more smoothly. Okay, so basically you have a weight, okay, this is going to be pulling down, try to get it, pulling down on this stick here. So it's creating a force, you make, you make your cordage go up here and, and put it in a bind here and it's creating a toggle and this is creating a force that you can harness by restraining it with a smaller stick, okay? And we'll go over the, the ins and outs of it, like I said. And if you have this stick weighted, puts a pressure on here, tries to make this stick go this way, but it will not go that way because of this trigger stick and you get rid of the trigger stick and it's going to go down like this. That's basically the premise for the whole thing. I mean it's a very very simple setup. A couple of forked sticks 
and you do need some cordage with this. Um, actually, I take that back. If you found some sticks, it would take a little bit of work, but if you found some sticks that had some forks in the exact right space, I think you could do this without cordage, but it's gonna be a smoother operation, in my opinion, with this cordage. This is some of that nettle cordage, basically just a jam knot up on top, and I kind of eyeballed where I wanted this to hang out. I could see I could make it go just a little bit higher, probably wouldn't hurt anything. I actually may do that. Um, just a jam knot up here and a bowline here. So I'll probably make this go up a little bit higher, just so I get a little bit more force when it falls down. So then you have this piece on the bottom. I'm gonna call this my anvil, and I'm gonna call this piece my hammer. Okay. I don't know the proper names for them. That's just how I envision it in my mind. This is what you don't want your hammer to slam down on nice cushy moss or, or grass or anything like that. You want it to be a straight, hardcore, blunt force trauma to this animal. It's, this is not a holding trap. This is a killing trap. You want to you basically turn its guts to jelly and then kill it instantly and be humane and, and then it's not going to get away from you either. So couple of fork sticks, you got your anvil, <clears throat> you got your hammer. We'll come back to the hammer in just a minute. We'll set that up. Got a couple of other sticks. <clears throat> These are going to be the guide for your hammer. And I want them to be up against my anvil, basically, you know, pretty close, as close as I can get it there. And I carved them off a little bit, or, you know, sharpened them a little bit, just so they drive into the ground a little bit better. And as you can see, I've got a lot of rocks in my property. So that's as far as that sucker's going in there. Now I just happened to grab another forked stick, just in case I needed this forked stick. It doesn't need to be forked, it just, like I said, it just happens to be. And there's the rock there. Okay, I'm gonna take just a second. And you know, there is a little messing around with this when you get it set up. So I mean, like I said, I gotta mess with the, uh, the height of the cordage. But once you kinda get messing with it, then you understand what you need for next time. And the first time you do a project, it's always gonna take the longest. And after that, usually the time is decreased significantly. So already we have our framework, it's already coming together. Like I said, a lot of the time was, was uh, just picking off the pieces of sticks and stuff like that. But all right, let me uh, shorten this up and we'll get back with you. Okay, we're about to get some uh, rain here, so I'm just gonna keep going on it. But, you know, it's a pretty simple, pretty simple deal. I did shorten up the cordage a little bit, okay. I'm not going to worry about that stick right now. Basically, this, and I've got this the wrong way right now, this stick could have been quite a bit longer. And had it been a little, uh, quite a bit longer, like basically five feet instead of the three feet that it is right now, it would have lended itself to putting more weight and it just would have been a better deal. So I'm just going to grab my, this is my, the biggest log I have, ha I have right here. And I'm going to just set this on here. Now I had to use some decent cordage for this. This is going to put some strain on your cordage here. And you're going to want to make sure that, I mean, this is a dead stick. It's not the strongest, but you're going to want to make sure it's pretty, you know, pretty strong. Especially depending on what size you end up, or how much weight you end up putting on your trap. So I've got my, I don't know if you can see that or not. Right there, I've got my thumb on the toggle. As long as I have my thumb holding that there, it shouldn't fly up and hit me in the face or set the trap off. Put this under my leg, kind of give it some support. Now I'm gonna start adding logs to the other side, okay? And 
This log obviously is quite a bit heavier than the logs on the left side. So I want to kind of get this log, my hammer, I want to get that over there a little bit. So I've got more sticking off on the other side, on the left side here. So pick that up. Wouldn't hurt to have this one on this side. All right. Now it's set. I need to go cover my camera. Sorry guys, it's starting to rain. I gotta get something to cover it. Okay, now that the trap is set, we can kind of tweak it a little bit or you know adjust it as necessary. Um, it's it's set right now very very strong it would take it would take a lot to set this off um, considering the size of animal that we're going off after I want to try and you know redo that to a hair trigger um, also we could we could add more weight to it we could tweak uh, tweak the weight so that the back of the logs if you had another like longer log you can kind of lift the back of the logs up and it kind of creates a little better um, fulcrum okay and kind of uh, will create a little bit more force down on your hammer. One thing I've done here is um, yesterday I was messing with it, messing with the trigger. My natural cordage is very abrasive, just like I showed on my other video. It's very abrasive, and it doesn't um, it doesn't slide a hundred percent well. So what I've done is I kind of notched this um, this top stick a little bit, just kind of smoothed it out, got rid of the bark a little bit. Okay, so that's one thing I did. Another thing is, I think it's good that, and I could even do this a little bit more, but it's good that the toggle is off-center, okay, because I want to funnel this animal right across the trigger stick. This could be set across a trail, but you would definitely want to fence it, fence the animal in. Um, I could do fencing on the inside of my logs here, in case I thought the animal was coming from this direction, but primarily, um, I would hope that the animal would come from that direction um, only if I was doing it a different way. Um, this trap is good for the animal traveling in either direction, but I could set this trap up and put a cubby behind it and put bait behind it. I wouldn't want to put the cubby over here or anything um, because you got to be careful with this stick is a lot bigger than our normal toggle. So you can't have anything over here. But I could put a cubby up on behind it and even put a lid on it and everything and put some bait back in there so the animal, you know, the, the weasels and stuff feel more secure or they're used to going into little hidey holes like that, burrows, stuff like that. So that would be kind of cool. You know, a lot of a lot of fencing and, and which really shouldn't take too long, just pounding in some sticks and maybe even uh, weaving a little bit of grass or brush or something like that in there. One other thing for this, um, it, it would be nice if I was able to, one thing with this cord is too, even though it's a bowline knot, it's a pain in the butt I'm doing <laughs> with it being so abrasive. But anyway, um, it would be nice to have this hammer up a little bit higher, okay? And then this trigger stick down a little bit lower. But one thing that I could do to to try to funnel the animal through this gap here so that he steps on that would be just to, just like how we trap uh, when you're putting chaff and stuff like that around uh, a steel trap for the pan, you put stuff where you don't want the animal to step. So, you know, I wouldn't want to put anything rigid or anything like that in it, but I could put, um, you know, some, some grass or something like that that doesn't it's not going to really blunt the force of my trap, but it's going to may maybe make him so he kind of doesn't want to go between there, if that makes sense. Okay, do that. That's a you know real small example, but kind of kind of beef that up a little bit there. Mostly, I think I'd want to raise this up maybe another two inches if I was going for for rabbit size animals. If I was going for a weasel, I would want to lower this down about two inches. 
So anyway, I've got it set very strongly. Um, one other thing I can do now is I've got this cottonwood, or not cottonwood, I got this poplar. I can put that right out here. And it's got a flat spot to it. Okay, now that's going to add even more weight to it. So let me kind of get you to the side here and you can kind of check it out. Okay, and like I was saying, one thing about this log is you definitely don't want it in the way of your of your trigger stick. Now one thing I was messing with was making this pretty, um, just the operation of it very smooth. You want it as smooth as you possibly can. So what I was doing was releasing the toggle a little tiny bit and then forcing it. That puts a lot of pressure on your, on your, uh, Man, the mosquitoes are bad. That puts a lot of pressure on this knot and on this portion of your toggle. If you, if you release it and then kind of force it back into place, that puts a lot of pressure right there. And if you can see down here, I just kind of did it half-heartedly, but I kind of made this a little bit flat. This flat surface on the trigger stick and this round surface on the toggle is going to make for a pretty speedy trap or a quick release uh, hair trigger you might say. So there you go. Okay, little, little guy comes running, he's fenced in either this way, he's fenced in both direction and comes in this way or he comes in this way because you've got a cubby built right over here. Okay, just like that. And my understanding is you want between five and seven times the amount of weight, crushing weight, between five and seven times the animal's weight itself. So, that's well over 10 pounds. I would say this would take care of a bunny rabbit pretty good or for sure a weasel. And, you know, you, there's nothing wrong with putting more crap, um, well, you wouldn't want to put it here, like I said, but putting more logs, more thinner logs, kind of bundling them together because they, they rest real easy. And plus one, you can just kind of start making a pyramid thing. So, all right, I'll reset it up. And we'll set it off again. I just love this trap. This thing's awesome. Okay, I'm gonna work it. Okay. It's sliding pretty good there, but get as much tension on that rope as I can. Got it set pretty heavy while I put the big log on. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, so what I did this time is if you did not have a cubby behind the trap, you could put your big log or, you know, a bunch of series of uh, smaller logs, whatever. You could put it on the back there, and I just lifted these logs and put them forward a little bit more, which actually put a little more weight on my hammer. Um, it got a little more of the weight over the center there. And uh, so there you go. So it's just, I just am just really intrigued by this trap. I mean, I just love it. It just seems like there's so many different variations and things that you could do with this. And especially, uh, Magnus, like you were saying about how you don't have like one big, nice, awesome log to use as a deadfall. You can use a lot of different ones for this. One thing that I kind of like about this too is there's a lot of things that go into these deadfalls. Um, a lot of theory and a lot of just different things. But one thing that, that really intrigued me about this is this, this hammer. That hammer is a small diameter log. That to me tells me that there's going to be a lot of force exerted on a small surface area. Okay, so yeah, you could have a bigger log in there and stuff, but just for me, it's almost, you can take it to extremes between a big thick board almost down to like the back of a knife edge. And if you can imagine that's going to exert, it's the same amount of pressure being exerted downward, but it's confined in a smaller area. So I don't, I don't know, that's my theory with this. I really like this small little, little hammer there. So, all right, I mean, I don't know how many times I can set it off, but... Uh, I'm just having a blast with this thing. I love it. Look at that. Snap that freaking... That's what you want right there. That was the force that I wanted. By putting that log back here, you know, uh, really made a big difference. And this is a rotten birch log. Um, that's why it snapped like that. But that... Almost any animal that could fit in there, that would be a hurting unit right there. That was a lot of force. All right, done playing, I guess. All right, guys. Well, I hope you liked the video, um, Magnus. I hope that was uh, something kind of what you were thinking about. I'm going to be using some of these for um, trapping this year, I think. I'm going to be putting some of these out for weasels and maybe squirrels, rabbits, whatever. There is a lot less regulations on using a deadfall like this than there, than there are snares in my area. Like I mentioned before, spring pole snares are... They're not illegal, but you can't lift the animal up off the ground, which is basically the purpose of the spring pole, in my opinion, is to strangle it and get it up off the ground. So these dead poles are a lot more legal, so I'm going to be using some of these in my regular trapping season. Trapping season starts in about a month and a half for me. Um, so yeah, there you go. I may even try it for some bigger animals, because I could see where... I mean, if you did it right and if you had the right cordage and stuff, you could make a trap darn near big enough for a deer or something if you had help maybe or if you had uh, some way to lift that big a uh, uh, tree log up and stuff. So anyway, take care. Little bonus footage. That clinked its clock right there. <laughs>